Have you experienced a computer lockout or a failure of your equipment and didn't know what to do? It's likely that you experienced a common electrical problem called a surge or transient. The solution for protecting equipment against these problems is a surge protection device or SPD. A surge or transient is a sudden intense increase in voltage within an electrical system. Think of it as a brief, powerful electrical event that can impact connected devices. A surge can degrade, damage, or even destroy electrical equipment within a home, commercial building, industrial plant, or manufacturing facility. So, what does an SPD actually do? And are they only for lightning protection? We think of big voltage transients coming from lightning storm, but surges can come from many other sources. High intensity surges can result from power company switching operations, power line faults, or malfunctioning large equipment. These events, with voltages reaching thousands of volts, can cause immediate damage. Small surges, such as those from routine electrical devices, switching may not be as powerful, but the repetitive occurrences can eventually lead to failure. A surge can be caused by anything that creates a switching transient. Examples of this would be motors turning on and off, LED lighting, faults, or capacitor switching. Really anything electrical that switches may cause some transient that can be damaging over time. A surge protector will create an alternate path only for surge events above a certain voltage threshold, sending all excess energy away from protected equipment directly to ground and leaving a lower residual voltage on the line. This is like how a properly designed relief valve only opens under damaging conditions and doesn't leak anything out during ordinary operation. This is an example of an industrial SPD and businesses use them to protect important pieces of electronic equipment. Surge protection provides an affordable solution to safeguard these valuable investments. Let's take a closer look on how it works inside. The basic components in a modern surge protection device are thermally protected metal oxide varistors or MOVs. These MOVs are essentially electronic switches that redirect the energy to ground and away from the equipment during a high voltage event. The number and type of MOVs in a surge protector dictates the rating and life expectancy of the device. The thermally protected MOVs are required in case there is a continuous overvoltage, which could cause regular MOV devices to fail. In the case of continuous overvoltage, you potentially have bigger problems, and there are plenty of solutions for that. But for short, high voltage transients, these things work great. As a simple example, think of it like this. If you touch a hot stove briefly, you won't be burned. However, if you leave your finger on the stove for any longer, you could end up with serious burns. Some SPDs will have the option to include additional filtration. These modules use capacitors for EMI or RFI filtering, and they help smooth out your power system sine wave. This is especially important for industrial applications where electrical noise is prevalent, since many low voltage controllers and relays can be highly prone to misoperation due to noise. Whether you know it or not, there are SPDs everywhere, already in homes and businesses. You've probably used power strips like this one that are actually also surge protectors. But remember, this doesn't necessarily go both ways. Not every power strip is a surge protector. Many consultants, designers, and electricians apply surge protectors like an insurance policy for electrical equipment. But now, you're going to see these more often because the NEC has recognized the need for surge protection and has really cracked down on the requirements especially where safety concerns exist. Based on these NEC requirements, you shouldn't see any new construction without surge protection for these applications. Critical operating systems, fire pumps, elevators, critical data centers, machinery with safety interlocks, and even dwelling units. There are two main factors in getting the most out of an SPD, proper installation and proper sizing. There are requirements for the breaker or fuse that the SPD connects to, and a minimum wire size. But beyond those things, we strongly recommend installing SPDs with the shortest lead length as a best practice. This will give you the smallest amount of electric voltage, offering better protection to your load center, MCC, switchboard, or switchgear. We have test setups with three identical SPDs with different lead lengths that demonstrate this. 
The lesser voltage at the panel where the loads are connected is significantly affected by lead length. The bus connected SPD with zero lead length clamps at 350 volts. The one mounted 12 inches from the bus clamps at 550 volts. And the one just three feet away lets through almost 1500 volts. In some real world locations, we've seen them mounted more than 20 feet away from the equipment they are trying to protect. In that case, we would recommend that you don't even bother installing an SPD because it's not going to help you. As far as sizing the SPD, we have some rules of thumb for your incoming service and for downstream panel boards and loads. But really, it goes back to what I said earlier. The capacity of the SPD is dependent on the number and type of MOVs. In general, bigger SPDs are more appropriate near your service entrance and smaller units are more appropriate near the loads. Surge protectors are split into three categories, type one, type two, and type three based on their application and location in a power system. A type one surge protector is installed at the incoming utility power. It's easy to see in this setup. It would go here at the utility meter. A type two SPD is downstream of where power is distributed, like at this load center. Anything after this and at the equipment would be considered a point of use or type three SPD, like a surge strip or surge receptacle. In summary, surge protection is a really effective method to protect equipment from various transients. The NEC now requires consideration for surge protection in special applications, especially where safety is a concern. It's really important to understand the different SPD specifications and how to properly install the appropriate device. Finally, as we've shown, how you install them matters. Many of these demonstrations we've talked about are set up here at the Power Systems Experience Center. If you're interested in learning more about SPDs and their applications, or if you would like to see them in action, contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to one of Eaton's Power Systems Experience Centers today.